and make sure you report your LVAP hours. You're doing a great job. And I want to congratulate the top five division winners. Virginia, imagine that. Where are we at, Virginia? Yeah, every year since we started that award, these guys have gotten it. Uh, South Carolina, where are you at? Congratulations. Wisconsin, where are you at? Wisconsin. South Dakota? Yeah! All right, move on. Nebraska, my bad. Way to go, Jamie. Or should I say Kristen? Way to go. Thank you. LVAP is pretty much anything that you do in the community. Your imagination is your only limit. I get asked all the time, well, does this count? Does this count? Absolutely it does. If you're doing something serving veterans and their family in the community, it counts. Please report your hours to your appropriate individual within your chapter or your department, okay? These are just a few examples of things that you can do that qualify as OBAP hours. How many chapter and department service officers do I have in the room? Wow. All right. My next question. How many of you have not reported your hours? Don't be embarrassed. Put your hand up. <laughs> are, you, are you compensated? That's why you haven't reported your hours or you just forgot to report them? Hey, don't, don't be embarrassed. Get those hours and get them reported. We really want to do it, okay? It's, I understand life's busy. We forget or if you think it's unimportant. It's very, very important. How many of you have uh, done a, uh, how many of you reported your hours when you went through your training, your certification? All right, same question, how many of you did? You can report those hours, that training, it's, all that stuff is important. So, just, just think about it like that. I mean, again, it's easy to do, I'm not beating anybody up, but just think about it. There's a lot of hands that were still in the air. Think about how many hours you did and how many we missed out on, okay? BABS. How many volunteers do I have in the hospital in a room? How many of you haven't been able to go back? I want to thank you for what you do. I know if, some, every, if you've been to one VA, you've been to one VA. It's, it's a challenging process. Bear with us. We'll continue to work with the VAs. If you run into certain issues, pick up the phone call, Ron, myself, anybody on our team. Uh, we might be able to elaborate and dig in a little bit more. Uh, Hopefully you find us as a valuable tool and a resource and we can help get you where you need to be. So thank you for what you're doing inside the hospital, okay? Um, here's a few pictures of some of our outstanding volunteers who have won awards in the past, but these are just some of the assignments that might occur inside the uh, hospitals. Um, how many hospice volunteers do I have in here? Any hospice volunteers? All right. That's a tough job, and I was going to say thank you for doing what you do. It's a very difficult like Exactly. I'd like to be a hospice volunteer. I just don't know how to sign up for it. Talk to your chief or your CDCE director, whatever they're going by nowadays, and let them know you're interested, okay? They're, they're always looking for hospice yes, volunteers. Sir. Yes, sir. All right, thank you for it. Transportation network. How many volunteer drivers do I have in the room? Thank you for what you do. Yes, sir. You guys provided more than 163,000 rides last year. That doesn't sound like a lot, but it's absolutely remarkable knowing the hurdles and the issues that we continue to face day in, day out as a result of COVID. So proud of you guys. Thank you so much. How many people know that we have resources and availability to uh, help you recruit new drivers? Got a whole bunch of that great stuff. We have a product that works. Anybody in here from Minnesota? We did, a, we did a project with you guys a few years ago, and I know y'all brought almost 70 new drivers in Minnesota. That's the kind of success we can have. We'll work with your local media. We'll work with the HSC. We'll schedule a ride along. Get a news crew to ride in a vehicle with you while you're transporting a veteran. What, what a sexy story that sells itself, right? If that doesn't it motivate people to become a driver, nothing will. Thank you for what you do. We have that availability, okay? We expect this upcoming year to be one of our largest orders in our transportation network's history because of how few vehicles we've ordered over the last two years as a result of the limited use of COVID. 
So I tell you right now, and I say that, but I want to tell you that right now because you need to go back and start looking and thinking how many vehicles you're going to want to order because when that order sheet comes out, we're going to be stuck on a tight, tight deadline to get those back in, get them ordered so we can get those vehicles on time. I know you probably drive by car lots right now and you see no vehicles on them. We got a Toyota dealership in Florence that doesn't have a single truck sitting on it. Is we're going to continue to face that issue for a few years. They anticipate that going through 2024. So go back and think, start your planning now. I bet some of you guys are going to order 10 or 15 vehicles. Pennsylvania, where are you at? You're probably going to order a lot of vehicles. You always do. In Montana, you're probably going to order quite a few as well. So just think about that. Make sure you have the need. Start talking with the people in, in, in your line that you're going to need to work with to work that out early, okay? Right now, I'd like to also pick on Oklahoma. They got a great onboarding, the Drive a Hero program. If you haven't talked with Danny Oliver, he's got this thing worked out with the VA Medical Center. They come to the department convention, they onboard all their drivers right there. He does that prior proper planning. He's got a great recipe. I would say talk with Danny if you haven't done it, he'd love to tell you about it. Wouldn't you, Danny? I would. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Look at the number of vehicles we've purchased since 1987. Isn't that remarkable? That's DAVs and yours. That's our, our commitment to the men and women who serve this country. Great, great program, guys. Keep up the great work. This is a letter. It came from uh, the senators, uh, John Tester, uh, Margaret Hassan, and Tom Tillis. All that's a result of the great state of New Hampshire. Where are you guys at? Little tiny state of New Hampshire. Tiny state. Work with their senator. Talk about the onboarding of volunteers. Why does it take so long? I applaud you guys for your staunch advocacy and, and being that squeaky wheel. Um, they're making a difference. And so if you think you're not doing something, you think, oh, we're just a little old state of Rhode Island, we're not going to make a difference, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're a member of DAV. You're proud volunteers. You want to continue this legacy of service that we've done for over 100 years. Stay vocal. Stay involved. It's important. They're making progress. Super proud of those guys in the house. All of you. Stay in it, okay? Don't give up. Scholarship program. This is Ron's baby right here. He's made a significant change. He would work with DMV leadership and have got more money for this program. We now award 10 scholarships valued at $110,000. $110,000. Does that excite you? Now, I hope all of you had the opportunity to hear Evan yesterday and when he was up there talking. Or, Saturday, excuse me. These days run together, believe it or not. Wow. Um, we also sent each of your departments and chapters letters letting you know that, hey, in our database, John C. Smith is still eligible for the scholarship. Reach out to him. Encourage him. We sent letters to all the individuals in our system that are still 21 years or younger and eligible to meet the criteria for the scholarship, encouraging them to apply. Last year, we only had 76 applications. We just sent out 97 letters to people that we didn't have an email for. If you know a young man or woman who is volunteering their time and has 100 hours in the name of PAD, nominate them yourself. You can do that. Talk to them. Say, hey guys, you know $30,000 can pay for a whole, whole education. Uh, encourage them to do that. I'm asking them. I'm challenging each of you to get at least one person to nominate themselves for this scholarship. Boulder Crest Mentoring Retreats, another one of Ron's great programs that he's, he's working with the Gary Sinise Foundation on. We do five of these retreats a year. One of them, DAV solely funds, specific for women veterans. Uh, is Carmen McGinnis in the room? Carmen's a National Area Supervisor in uh, Denver. She'll be going to the retreat this October to serve as a DAV mentor. She's a remarkable individual. You've probably seen her in one of our PSAs. Um, this retreat 
Retreat's probably not a great word for it. It's a very intense therapy that focuses on post-traumatic growth. And I know you've heard that term. I've seen it heard it in a few seminars. Um, very, very holistic. I've been to about eight of those retreats. They're very intense, and I'm always all in awe when I hear what individuals have gone through in their lives. <clears throat> the Winter Sports Clinic. Thank God we had that event this year. Two years we haven't had the event. I'm so glad to be back in Stone Mass. We had 147 veterans. Excuse me, 130 veterans participate this year. Uh, very reduced. We had a lot of a very strict COVID protocol we had to follow in order to have the event. We'll have the same COVID protocol that we had at the Winter Sports Clinic at the Golf Clinic next month. Uh, but we had veterans on the mountain doing what we do best, folks on rehabilitation. DB is very proud to co-present that event with our partners at the VA. And we're looking forward to a full event in 2023. The Golf Clinic, our newest adaptive sports program, I haven't had the opportunity, I, I did last year, but so it was renamed. It used to be called the T-Tournament. We now call the National Seven Leverage Golf Clinic. Great, nice new logo here. But I think it more accurately depicts what the event is about. You hear the words tournament and you think, I could be a great golfer to go do this. You don't. So clinic, the change, it's been a very great welcome change. Uh, we're going to have 143 veterans at this event this year. Uh, we'll probably lose a few more as we get closer, but it takes place September 11th through 17th in Iowa City, Iowa. Uh, do I have any, any in from the Department of Iowa? Woo Thank you for your continued support of that. You guys have a, you do a wonderful job there. Uh, something to be very proud of. Most of those veterans that just that event are visually impaired. It sucks getting your butt kicked by a blind golfer. <laughs> But a wonderful event. Uh, they also have other uh, activities such as uh, adaptive cycling, fishing, uh, air rifles, so on and so forth. But absolutely remarkable event. And I want to thank everybody who supports it. Primarily, most of you, chapters, departments, and units, your primary source of sponsorship. Thank you for your continued commitment to helping us put on wonderful events. And last but not least, there's no I in team, but I do, there's a human volunteer, and I need each one of you in this room to consider becoming a DND volunteer if you're not already a volunteer. How many of you are going to sign up to become a volunteer with your app, your convention app? Got any hands? Got a few. Stick it up, be proud of it, up there. Yeah. All right. I appreciate that. Um, here's our contact information. Anytime you need something from us, email BAPS at DND.org. Because Ron or I'll be on the road, somebody else is on the road, but every one of the team members up there has access to that email box. We're available for you. Help you with anything, any resources you have, problems. I get problems with Michael Elmore all the time. I got this going on, but I still help them. 